It's a taxi vlog, approximately 342. It is Thursday. It is the last Thursday of January. It is the 29th of January 2015 in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. That's for you, mess about one. Um, the week started off quietly. The Monday night was giving me one trip an hour, one trip in an hour and a half. And uh, it kind of dragged on. And then at four in the morning I had about $150 on. And I got sent on a call which saved my night and took me to the airport. This seems to be a pattern lately. Tuesday night was really quiet too, but when I first came out, I had a $20 fare that went from oh, north of Mackenzie downtown. And as soon as I dropped off downtown, I got another call which took me back out the way I had come for another $20. And even though it was a quiet night, I managed to bang off some really good trips, a few $20 fares here and there, and the night ended out really good. I had a good Tuesday night. No run to the airport at the end, but I worked till the end, and even though at one point, I think it was 10 minutes after 5, I was tired and I went and I went to shake out the mats and then wash the car, but in shaking out the mats, I heard the thing go beep, and I answered it too slowly, and then just as I was pulling out of the car wash, I got another call, and it was a $20 fare. It ended up good, the Tuesday night. The Wednesday, last night, I was tired. I was already worn out. I was burnt out. I had done a fair amount of reading the night before. I didn't really... I think I, I did take a few naps. Yes, I did. But I got a fair amount of reading done. I'm reading this book here. It's called... Uh, the Gate, of, the Gate of Time by Philip Jose Farmer with a suggestive cover. And uh, this is a good one. It's uh, these uh, pilots who are bombing a Nazi oil refinery in the Second World War get shot at by a Nazi plane and then they get transported into a parallel universe. And now the fun begins, shall we say. Out of World War II into something very similar in another parallel universe, another dimension and stuff. And what's fantastic is this book was written when I was like two years old. I think that's fabulous that even back in those days people had really good imaginations. Probably they had better imaginations back then than they do now. Because they didn't have all of the technology we have and they had to imagine it all. Now we got all the things. I mean, you know, I can open up my little phone and call Cindy and talk to her face to face like in the Jetsons. And it's not a great big TV screen. It's a tiny little phone that fits in my pocket. I mean, the future is here. There are good parts about it and bad parts about it. Huh. Was it last week that the radio went down? Yeah, it was. This week the radio didn't go down. 
but last night was just a drag. There were periods of time there where I sat an hour, hour and a half. I think I had $40 on by 10 o'clock, which is like three and a half hours into my shift. And I think I got my lease together by about 1, 1.30. And then it took until, you know, 3 to have my fuel money. And for some reason after that I started getting better luck. And I ended up taking home nearly a hundred dollars after expenses. It was quarter after five. I was so tired I couldn't see anymore. I could have stayed out another hour, uh, another 45 minutes anyway. But I had had enough. The mats had been shaken out. The car was clean. It didn't need a wash. It was dry last night. There was no rain. And I just fueled it up and went straight home. I cooked myself something to eat. I had one little dram of Johnny Walker Black Label, and that little drama Johnny Walker Black Label made me real tired. So I capped it off with a peated Ben Riech, and that was only a couple ounces. That was 50 mils, so a couple 50, couple times 50 milliliters of scotch, and I was out. I was out. I went to. I went right to sleep. I slept from 8 till about 3 when I woke up to my bright full spectrum light and I was reading in my room in bed and the rabbits were, I had the door open, so the rabbits came in the room and jumped up on the bed and they would come by and rub beside me a little bit and then they would jump off the bed and I'd be lying on my belly reading with my pillow underneath my arms and then the rabbit would jump on my back <laughs> and sort of, sort of hang out there on my back for a while and give me little kisses between my shoulder blades. <laughs> Rabbits are wonderful pets. You just, as long as you don't startle them, they're fine. They're great. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, end of January. I'll let you know about tonight and tomorrow. Either in the morning or tomorrow or sometime. I guess we make a short one out of this one. It's uh, 5.50 a.m. on Friday. 30th of January and evidently this week the Thursday night was the stinker. I was out here from 6.30 and a few times I sat for more than two hours between calls. I've had a grand total of 11 trips in 11 hours. Um, so that means an, an average of one trip an hour. And uh, once, one at one point, I had had four trips on, and then between 10 and 11 o'clock, I had three trips in one hour. And wow, you know, it, it took me still until three o'clock to break even. And at the, this point right now, I have maybe. I think maybe I made $25, $30 for myself for the whole night. And uh, it, it was just the stinker. It was just uh, not a good night. The lease is too, too damn high. And uh, people have just received their credit card bills from Christmas. And so they're struggling to pay that back. And it's evident that I, I'm not getting a lot of cash, I'm getting a lot of Interac and, and 
a lot of charges. So, um, yeah, this one wasn't too good. In 10 minutes, uh, the day shift guy will be there waiting for me. Uh, fortunately, the car didn't get dirty because uh, it didn't have a chance to. I didn't have a lot of customers. I did a grand total of 90.3 kilometers all night, and that's like 60 miles, not even 60 miles, 55 miles all night. Typically a slow night, I will do, you know, one and a half times this much. I didn't drive very far at all. I think the, uh, the indicator for the fuel gauge went down one bar, and there's like, I don't know how many, there's like, there's like 12 bars and it only went down one. So I think my fuel bill will not be very much. It's boring. Oh, crikey. I went to sleep um, no fewer than three or four times. I'm almost finished the book I'm reading. I've got like 22 pages to go. Um, I have watched uh, all the YouTube videos that I'm subscribed to up until I guess three o'clock and I watched uh, something else from NASA secret files or whatever um, was something on my to watch later list uh, you know how they <sighs> you know how they recommend things for you to watch well I, I watched one of those so, I'm hoping that um, tomorrow, well, Friday, tonight, I'm hoping that Friday night will be uh, good to be. Because this, tonight, was just, yeah. Well, I'll stop beating this puddle on the sidewalk that once used to be a dead horse. Now, talk to you in about 24 hours. Oh, good morning. It's uh, 8.23 a.m. Saturday. It is the 31st, I believe. Last day of January. Okay. And uh, I was out there from 6.30 till 6.30, practically. Good to the last drop. Cheers. Eighteen-year-old Gibson's rare. You know, there's some whiskeys that I only appreciate on pouring the last glass, and then they really shine. And this one's this one's shining right now. Funny, I didn't think much of it. before now. Oh yeah, it's a taxi lock. Fright. <laughs> I'm still not used to this not being a mirror because I see myself, but it's not a mirror image. And I'm pretending it's a mirror image because I'm so used to seeing myself in a mirror. And I wondered what people were all about when back in the early days of YouTube when they were pointing this way or pointing that way or pointing you know, to where things were in the description, and that's um, because they were uh, dealing with this uh, non-mirror image of themselves staring at them. But I always worked with a camera such as this one, and so because of that, I never experienced that uh, particular little um, thing. Uh, I guess I'll
cut to the old chase and tell you how the Friday was. Now, I remember how I said Thursday wasn't very good. Well, Friday was a continuation of that, only it wasn't quite as bad as Thursday. I guess for most of the night I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And every time I ended up in the zone, I was the last car, and there were several cars in front of me. And uh, cars in front of me would get calls right away, and I would sit for half an hour before getting something. And then instead of getting like a $15 or $20 fare, I would get an $8 fare. And that's just kind of how most of my night went. And I had about $150 on by midnight. And usually by midnight I like to have a couple hundred on. So already we were, we were falling behind. And then, you know, between quarter to two and quarter to three, I didn't get anything while... Things were probably hopping downtown, but I hate downtown so much that I don't go there. So, at one point I was watching a video, a long one, and then I fell asleep. And this was at about, oh, I don't know, after 4, just around 4, 420, something like that. And I only had like $230 on. And when you have a $150 lease and your fuel's going to cost you another 15 bucks, you're not making a lot of money that way. So. I went and I did the next call and that was good it went for $25 from one end of town to the other then after dropping those people off I see this guy waving at me at a street corner and he says he's looking for a place but he forgets the name of the street he said it's near Cedar Hill and Cedar Hill Cross there's Cedar Hill Road and Cedar Hill Cross Road that crosses it. So we went there. I said, here is Cedar Hill and Cedar Hill Cross. He says, well, turn left. So we turned left. And I said, well, now we're going down the hill towards Shelburne and the McDonald's. He said, no, not near McDonald's. Make a U-turn. Go the other way. So we go the other way. We go all the way down Cedar Hill Cross to McKenzie. And then we start going down Mackenzie, and he says, um, turn left. No, turn around. Okay, fine, turn around. He says, go back up that way. So we go back up Cedar Hill Cross, and keep on going. And I say, well, let me know if something looks familiar. Let me know. And uh, he wouldn't tell me, and then we got to Cedar Hill and Cedar Hill Cross again, and we went over the top, and we're heading down towards the McDonald's in Shelburne again. And and I say, well, this doesn't seem right. I wish you'd remember the name of the street you're on. And then he says, I can't remember the name of the street, but I know it's around here somewhere. So I think we went down again. And uh, he said, oh, uh, it's near a golf course. I said, yeah, there's a golf course just on the other side of those houses there. And uh, he says, well, what? Where is their traffic lights? I said, well, there's, there's one at Brayfoot, and there's one at Blankensop. Blankensop. That seems to ring a bell. I said, so what do you do when you get to Blankensop? He says, you go down the hill. Okay. So we get to Blankensop, and down the hill is to the right. And up the hill is, is to the left. And uh, he says... Uh, turn left and I said well you said it was down the hill from this traffic light and he says and I said that that way goes uphill 
He says, yeah, yeah, but doesn't it go downhill after that? I said, well, yeah, it goes up, it goes down, but okay. He says, turn left here. So we turned left there and we went a while. He says, is there a traffic light? Is there a stoplight in along here? I said, you mean along Blankensop? He says, yeah, yeah, There's a, it's right near the traffic light, right near the stoplight. I said, well, there's one at Blankensop and Tattersall. But then Blankensop changes names and becomes Maplewood. So, we got to the traffic light. And as soon as we got to the traffic light and through it, he said, stop right here, this is it. It was uh, in the 3500 block of Maplewood because Blankensop becomes Maplewood after Tattersall. It's a Victoria thing. So the guy was all thankful and <laughs> that was another $20. So that worked out good, you know, I made $45 right there, almost at the end. And then I went back to the parking lot where I usually sit. I ended up chatting with another driver, a good friend of mine, and uh, I described this whole ride, and he described the guy, and I described the other half of him, and he said, yeah, that's the guy, he was in my car tonight, he said, I took him from Hollywood to Cedar Hill and Cedar Hill Cross, <laughs> and I said, well, I guess I had him after that. So, and he said, yeah, yeah, I took him from Hollywood. We went along Richmond all the way, and we went down Cedar Hill Cross. And uh, the guy had said he wanted to go to Cedar Hill and Cedar Hill Cross, and that's where I left him off. And I said, that's good enough, he said. And so the guy wandered around for a whole hour before he flagged me down, and I managed to get him. To where he was going. <laughs> anyway, then of course I went and washed the car and fueled it up and parked it and then I was so glad to come home. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Just while I was on the topic, come home and have something to eat, which I did. I was watching some more video and then I thought, you know, I should finish this taxi vlog so I can go go to sleep and sleep away the day. Because I am exhausted from this week. And it was not a spectacular week. It was just barely borderline acceptable. Any worse, and I would have been kind of angry about it. But it's nice to uh, to get home and uh, share with you my experience and sip on some whiskey. I sincerely hope that yours is better than mine.